This is Boxing Tickets NA in association with Violent Gentlemen. Um, we're at uh, Evolution Boxing Club in Carrick Fergus. Um, we've got the main man back, Anthony, Col- Anthony Colcacci. How are you, mate? How's it going, Steve? All good, mate. All good. Uh, I think the last time we spoke, 3rd of February. Um, it was probably, probably fair to say, probably going to be a big career break for you. Um, at that stage, you were going to be chief support to Frampton Heron. Yeah. Um, in, in London, um, I guess at that stage. But but obviously, probably one of them strange scenarios where Frampton fight was put back because of the hand. Yeah. Um, and then obviously your fight with Leon Woodstock got called off two, three days before. Called off the day before the way in. Uh, well, what it was was Frampton. The Frampton fight was pulled off and I was given the the main slot on the card. So, you know, the the top fight. So I, I, was, I was over the moon. Top of the bill on a Frank Warren card, been shown all over the UK, and um, it's buzzing. I was in great shape, sharp as a razor, and then obviously we all got there, um, got to the hotel, everything was going well. Then it came to testing time, and both got tested, and I was I was the night before the way in, and I was scrolling through Twitter, and I see a tweet. From Frank Warren of Queensbury Promotions, saying that Woodstock has uh, got COVID nineteen, and I couldn't believe it. Broke, broke me. Obviously, it was you know, I was there. Been a, a t- I have never had, I hadn't defended the title yet once. Thought this is it. I'm gonna get get Woodstock out of the way and move on to bigger and better things. And boom, just unlucky. It's it's like you know, obviously in the past we've had you know Frampton go to airs. Cancelled, obviously, and freak, slip freak, the freak slip in the shower, sort of after the weigh-in, sort of thing. Yeah. But I guess COVID sort of brought, not nearly say another excuse, sort of thing. But it was sort of you can't really get excited a fight card until you can pass until back you know, with a positive test. So it's that's it. it's another thing in a fighter's mind. I guess you're you're you know you're moving all changes, making weight and everything else, and you're sort of going, let's wait to my opponent to actually pass this COVID test before we can actually gear up to the fight. Yeah. Well, that that. Camp, I was. I've never made weight the way I made it then. It was, it was perfect. I never felt it was good on the weight. It was, everything was just going as well as of it should have been. You know, it was just feeling amazing, and um, it was just a shame, as you can't, as you say, like you can't get too excited in these uncertain times, and you know, people are feeling test left, right, and centre. But it's still what it is. And and obviously in the lead up as well, you you know, was it was it January or over Christmas? You were sparring with, with Carl as well and sort of rolling back the sort of times as well. So That's right. That's right. I'd good, good be experience over there doing sparring with Frampton for for the Hurrings back then. That would have been the top of the bill. And um, yeah, it was great. It was great to mix with Jamie Moore and Nigel Travis and all the rest of the lads. It was amazing. It was surreal being there, you know, seeing how proper pros train. Did you get debagged over in Manchester, did you? Yeah, I got the trunks pulled down as soon as I walked through the gym door. <laughs> I think it's just a given now. You, you know if you're going to that gym, you're going to get debagged, <laughs> you know. Ah, it was funny. It was funny. And it was totally unexpected as well. So literally just walked through the door, <laughs> revving <laughs> ankles. Okay. Nigel's a bar. It's funny lad. I think actually Stephen Ward probably saved you because I think he actually put like a smiley emotion. Because <laughs> obviously I think it was a wee bit too much shown, you know. He covered it up. Um, but sort of going back to obviously the the Woodstock fight being cancelled, like for something that got to happen a couple of days out from the fight, like you know I can only imagine. Obviously I've never been in the position myself, but I can only imagine when you're when you're really really up here and you're going and, and you know haven't fought in so long, now I'm going to get a fight. They've been really really motivated when something like that happens. Like that's a serious kick, serious kick in the balls. Oh, it is. It's like I mean. I probably took it worse than what I should have. I should have just, you know, it was just, I hadn't defended the title. The opportunity was there. It was top of the bill. You know, everything went perfect for me. I mean, prior to that, you know, I hadn't had a payday. Like, so, like, I mean, I'm a full, I, would be, I was full time training twice a day, sometimes three times a day, just, you know, trying to stay hungry and motivated and sold my car to buy my shorts. And to buy other things, and um, not that like I mean, I, I get sponsored. I've got good sponsors on board. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But it just at that stage, it was it was tight for me. And um, yeah, to come home uh, with with no win, no money, 
just a kick in the teeth. It's, it's demoralising, really, you know, in a way, because, like, let's face it, you know, the world of social media nowadays, fighters getting slated left, right and centre, you know, where they won, where they lose, who the opponents are and everything else. Like Social media is a load of shit. The best thing to do is to stay away from it, you know what I mean? It's full of haters and people snooping. Mm-hmm. You know, it's they, not they, a big they've nothing to do but like you know for you to come away you know not only obviously the chance of going out there and getting a fight and <sighs> headline on a card but not getting any money of either like that's what 19 months now you're out of the ring and like people sometimes don't understand when you're a professional fighter the only way you earn money is inside the ring yeah that's it like I mean I don't do anything other other than that really you know I, I try and fit in friends would try and help me out don't get me wrong I have Cozy Roof they sponsor me and they have been looking after me for the last year I have Nico's that look after me and top Chaco Cosmetics plus many more but them top three they, they look after me and do a good job with me and whatever I need they'll help me with but again boxing's a wage like you know what I mean I've got three children that need that need things and whatever else and you know it's just and, and like it's like nineteen months of inactivity. I know you've had obviously an activity in the past, but it's it's not like it's not like you haven't wanted to fight, you know. No, I've been there, I've been ready, I've been training, you know, a couple of a couple of things have just have just been unlucky. Seems to be the trend in my career. It's just you think you're there and you're not there and it's just the way it is. Just the way it is. Don't wanna to do too much crying about it because it's been crying for too long. <laughs> but it's like th- three times Woodstock fights been made and, and obviously not happened. Yeah. You know, like you know, I know, I'm, I'm sort of going to touch on this next, but I know obviously Woodstock um, it was being made as a voluntary, but like when that fight doesn't happen, you know, like particularly with the last time it not happening, you were you were on weight, blah, blah, blah. I think Frank had a card like three or four weeks after. I think the plan was to have it. Like you could have went away, taken a week off. They could have got another opponent in there, you know. Well, so how many how many British super featherweights is there? You know, is it just come back to the testament that nobody wants to fight you? I, I don't know. I mean, I genuinely don't know. It's, you know, on that, when Woodstock had got the virus and whatever, like he knew he had the virus anyway, he said he didn't, but he knew coming down there. He travelled down alone. It was weird and the rat shook my hand as well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Thank God I had COVID in January, so I couldn't contract it again, you know. so. But I don't know. There was opponents on the, on the night that were offered. I know it's not uh, a big time frame, but it's a payday. And stick it in and have a fight. I don't know who they were. There was a couple of them, but I don't even want to mention any names. But they all turned, they turned it down. And um, I don't know. It's just it's a strange one. Like I mean, I'll fight anyone right, right now. Anyone. I mean, who is there? Who is there wants to fight? Only one match in this year. Get in contact. I mean, Woodstock. Don't know Woodstock. Woodstock's out of the picture. I don't want anything to do with Woodstock anymore. He's a cheeky, disrespectful, nah, whatever. Yeah. But, you know, he make, makes things up in his head about dates. Unless I'm just not being told things, which is possibly true as well, because, I mean, I can't seem to get a text message back these days from many of my own people. Mm-hmm. But it is what it is, you know what I mean? If any is one of fight, let's get it on. doesn't matter who you are. And, and it's like, you know, it's sort of, like I've seen Woodstock's tweet, and I don't really want to sort of, Mention too much about it, but but the sort of unprofessionalism <coughs> involved there, you know, is it like is it as if you don't want to fight? Like, is it voluntary? You I know, it's not a mandatory; you. it's it's a voluntary. So you were giving him the opportunity. Yeah. It's not that he was giving you an opportunity. So for him to come out and like boxing's in such a bad state sometimes with you know there's a lot of things with mental health with COVID and everything else, and and they come out and obviously call you. Things that obviously shouldn't be called to anybody. Like if, if fans were calling him that the opposite way around, he'd be playing a different card going, you know, this, that or the other. Why am I getting disrespected? All they're doing is calling me names. But they, he's calling you names to try and make a fight. He's an absolute clown. Like, I mean, he can call me whatever he wants. So that really doesn't, really, really doesn't bother me. I mean, would maybe bother other people. It doesn't bother me. Um, but it's just, I get what he's at. He's, you know, trying to sell himself in a way, make himself look big, but you know, the reason that Woodstock's there is because I want him to be there, like, you know, he fought sharp, he got a, he got a head, he fought for it, well, he didn't really get a head against sharp, he, he gave a good account of himself, um, but he was beat, for it beat him, I just wanted to show that I could knock him out, and that's exactly what I was going to do, you know, on the day when I, I weighed in with him, 
well, sorry, I met him on Tesson Day. You know, I felt like it was a man against boy. You know, I felt like he was small and fragile, but. And in a perfect way to sort of open your account with Frank as well, because like you're, you're saying with Frank, it would have been an exciting fight too, because I, I, you know, I, I say he's got the he's got heart, he's got a set of balls. He would have definitely brought it to me. But there's been people that's brought it to me before, you know, who are meant to be decent and, and good, like you know, couldn't hack a piece. Exactly, and obviously keeping up that man and sort of looking at sharp, you know. I know obviously we've we've given a bit of stick and stuff in the past, but yeah. like he was supposed to fight last weekend, I think against Souza uh, for the WBO Global um, belt, um, and obviously he's still at the whole. You know, I think he said I think he put a tweet yesterday saying they should curse Stevenson or see him soon. Yeah. You know, like I know at times yes you have to try and sort of sell your motivation and and everything else and sort of confidence you have, but like you know for him to think he probably can end a fight with Shakur Stevenson. I'm probably having any chance. Like Dago Gerdy, you know, not disrespecting Dago, I mean, Dago but Dago was beat, the beating him up for six rounds and yeah. you know, he threw a was three a big left hand. No. I think maybe I went to six. Did it? Okay. I think I think Dago was well ahead. Yeah, he was well ahead. He threw a threw a big left hand, pretty much like a range finder and landed in Dago and that was it. Listen, see Dago, he is a top class operator. There's no doubt about it. You know, I've known Dago from he was a child. He's a very good fighter, but Chen lets him down. A lot, and that's what happened there. You know, it's just he got caught the same as Margot McCulloch. He was caught. You know, he's been he's been knocked out. Same as Tini. He was, you know, he was outboxing most of these guys, but just couldn't take the heavy shots. I mean, but Dago was a good solid fighter, and yeah, he was he was boxing ahead of Sharp, making Sharp had no answers for him except the, that big punch that he caught him. You know what I mean? I truly believe. Truly believe that Sharp's a hick job. That you know, he's won the double fair play, he got the WBO, what is it? European. European. So, I mean, but he's never fought any Commonwealth, British, anything along them lines, anything. So, until he does, you know, I don't think he's got the right to say anything, call out any of these boys. Like Shakur Stevenson is lethal, lethal, you know, destroys Sharp, destroys him, destroys most of the people in the division, to be honest. You know what I mean? But, yeah, I just let Sharp carry on, whatever crap he, he wants to talk. To, but he wrote something on Twitter. I, you know, there was one, I was even, I retweeted something, you know, let's get it on, let's fight. And he wrote something about me drinking and drugs or whatever. And I was like, Are you fucking serious? Like, I, mean, mm. I don't even drink, don't do nothing. You know, uh, I'm a family man. He's, he's a fuck agent. But it is what it is. But, it, like, it's... It's one of the things sometimes he's probably thinking, would you rather lose to the best? Then, you know, if he was probably to lose, say, in a sort of domestic level fight, they'd probably, you know, probably lose his exposure to sponsorship and things like that. Whereas, you know, he's, he's bringing on the whole WBO number four on the line for a world title, which he technically, it's still probably miles away from because uh, Stevenson's next in line for the belt and it looks like potentially Heron and Valdez are going to fight next year on vacation. So then... Stevenson has to wait off for that, which then delays anything else. So, like, he's at his limit pretty much at four at the moment. So he's going to need decent fights. Like, <coughs> it's an easy fight to make as well. Too, you're both signed with Frank. Yeah, you know. Um, I, maybe you know he's protecting that that spot. You know what, ranking. But I he might get a big shot out of it. You know, but uh, is he ready for that type of that type of people? In my opinion, no. But fair play, walked away. And, and obviously one of your, your um, previous opponents, obviously Martin Ward, um, you know, the <coughs> world, world title uh, final alumnier, I think, in America. Not Saturday past, Saturday before, and, and obviously lost, but sort of, that was a fight you sort of looked at in the past. Yeah. Um, you know, I know we obviously have good respect for Martin Ward as well, so, yeah. you know, probably he sort of tried to step it up and, and has fallen short now, so that could potentially be a fight, you know, now that he's seen he's getting beat. Obviously, he was beat after the fight with you, but obviously, uh, James Tennyson. But obviously, that could potentially be a fight that could be, you know, I guess he's the only person that's beat you as a pro. Yeah. So sometimes you're sort of going to want the revenge. Yeah. You know, that sort of fight you would still sort of look at. I sat up to watch Martin. Um, I thought I thought he was boxing very well. Um, the kid was, the guy was fighting, a very good fighter. You know, back foot, counter puncher. Um, 
But I thought he was doing well and he got caught a couple of times and was unlucky because I know he sat back and he's waiting on that opportunity, you know. I would have liked to have seen him do it and I would have liked to have seen him push on and, and make something better of himself. But, I mean, who wouldn't be proud to call himself, you know, British, European, Commonwealth, uh, World, got the, world title final limit there, you know, uh, it's, it's, that's a good career. Definitely does. And uh, say so when you look at the sort of other object was obviously sharp you know he hasn't done any of that whereas no. you know it shows that like i think we spoke about it before in the past of sort of going through the sort of levels you know the old sort of route was going british you know either commonwealth or british but sort of going that way european and moving up which is the best way to sort of set your foundation but it seems to be people now look at it and go let's get, let's get there as quick as possible you know, it's like a dare to be great sort of thing. They want to be like Lomachenko. A fast track, everything, you know. I, I genuinely think you got to serve your time in the pros. Like, I mean, well, for most people, don't get me wrong, there's some absolute supreme talents, you know, that can, you know, can, for one, Josh Taylor. Mm. You know, doesn't need much time in the pros. He's just suited to everything. He's just top, top class. He's amazing. But um, I think you should serve your time and get the experience, you know, Go up the rounds four, six, eight, ten, and then get into the championship rounds. It's I think it would serve you well if you've got time. I mean, if you don't, I don't there's very few, unless you're a very special talent that will make it. And it's, it's a sort of the, the good way. I know it seems to be now the new sort of phase is that when you make a pro debut, you never went in the four rounders and strap up to six. It depends on obviously the level you've had amateur, yeah. but it's sort of a good thing for sort of young professional stuff coming through. There's been quite a lot of them recently, so sort of in and sort of looking and going, you know, and those sort of built, you built your sort of way up, whereas it's good advice to sort of take your time and and, it. and build it. Cause like, Especially if you have got the time. If you've got the time, take it. Learn everything, you know. Don't forget the stuff that you learned, that you were doing in your amateur days. It's a big, big thing for pros to just go in and think that they're punchers and, you know, I'll, you know it's in the professional game that I've got to take punches and take a beating to, no, go in and be smart. Take your time, learn your craft, make it right. And it's like, like even like your own career. Remember, you, you mentioned this in another one before. Like you've plenty of power. Like you know, Carter's obviously been out there in the past and sort of said that. You know, I think, I, I, I think there are times he sort of his, his words have been mixed up, but obviously he said that James Tennyson's probably happened really hard. You've probably been the hardest. You know, happened the hardest. But obviously you yourself at times have said, well, haven't really been motivated in a fight. So just been sort of through through the stages, but. Sort of does you the world of good sometimes going around just sparking some day and going, yeah, especially in my early days. It was like you know, my early pro career, I just the four rounders and all. I just I want I was always very negative in doing the rounds, you know, always like just thought, you know, six rounder, Jesus, what will it be able to do? I never worried about any opponents ever, like that's me. I, I, I worry about me, you know, and always worried about it being able to do the rounds. So, I when I done. Like I never, I never forget, you know, whenever I was with the late Paul McCulloch at Sean McCulloch, that um, I done an eight rounder on I think it was like a, a Queensbury pr Promotions card, and uh, you know, I fought a journeyman, you know, that I could have knocked away in two rounds, and I done eight rounds, and I felt like I won the world title. <laughs> you know, I just felt amazing. I, I could do eight rounds. This is this is talented, and that's where I learned to pace myself. No. Yeah, like I say, it builds well. Like sometimes when you get thrown in against somebody you're expected to blow away, when you do the rounds, it sort of builds you up for the next one because there's no point. Two rounds, going in and blow, blowing somebody out, and then you have to wait for like three months for another fight to come, and then you have to build up to it, and you're going, so what have I done? I haven't been in the round. Yeah. You know? Exactly. It. Um, sort of want to touch on, obviously, really good friend of yours, um, Carl Frampton, obviously, um, Dare to be Great. Um, probably have been great for you if. if and that card in March had a one ahead because obviously, you know, being old gym mates and everything else, you know, come up through everything together. Um, obviously, for the fight to be held off to them to happen in Dubai, there you know, say dare to go down in history, but just wasn't to be. I wasn't to be. I I thought he was he was he was looking lethal. He was looking, you know, I could see the determination in him. I could see he wanted it, you know. But her name's just big, isn't he? He's just massive. And um, it was hard, you know, I could see Carl trying to get under his jab. He couldn't get past the jab. And, you know, 
I think being in Maharine rather than watching him on TV is like two different things. You know, it's like uh, he just looked very, very awkward. And um, Carl did a bring he could. It was just that this guy was huge and he couldn't get past, he couldn't get in, and, and he didn't get caught. That was it. And I think it's, it's probably fair to say as well, like opponents probably in the past wouldn't have thought Carl was so good as well, you know, particularly with his feet work. Yeah. You know, opponents thought, that oh, front looks easy. And then in the ring, and they're going, you know, the footwork was so good they couldn't get him a name. Like Scott Craig, probably the, the, the best sort of example of that, where they got in and they're going, Craigie, I'm trying to bring a calm. Yeah. I would say Craig was a bit negative, sort of, in respects as well. But Well, Fronten, Fronten's footwork was, Jesus, it's amazing. You know, he, he knows exactly, he knows his way around the ring perfectly. You know, not only that, Sheer determination and power and grit and balls and everything, everything all over the money has it, you know what I mean? You know, big guys like Leo Santa Cruz and, you know, even Scott Quigg and now at that stage, you don't beat these guys being just average, mm. to be special. And he is special and most special. And, and obviously, I think now that he's been in the retirement, I think he's going to be a bodybuilder or something. I think he said he's sort of going to bulk up a bit. So, can you imagine Carl walking about? He'd be a wee beast, an absolute beast. Well, listen, I, I'm, I'm glad that he's retired now and he's able to enjoy his life to a full and enjoy his kids and his family and not have to travel away all the time, you know. I've experienced that before. And, yeah, it's good for you, maybe three weeks out, four weeks out, to take yourself away out of your comfort zone. But he was doing 12-week hard camps, mm -hmm. you know, missing his kids and whatever else, not being able to eat. See, now he can go and eat whatever the hell he likes, and I'm sure he's a happy, happy man. Definitely. And he's got a few pounds in the bank and a nice big house, so why wouldn't he be? I, th I think I think that sort of the fan sort of approach sometimes is you'd love Carly to stay within boxing, but I think he always said when he did retire, he probably wouldn't look, you know, look back into it. He'd probably give fires advice and everything else he's doing, obviously the stuff in BT and stuff, but in so some sort of selfishness way sometimes you'd probably like him to bring something under his cocktail, you know, and any sort of like obviously Barry probably done in you know, early on with Carlin, not sort of trying to bring it up for that sort of respect, but Barry was a world champion, but Carl under him and sort of people latched on to him sooner. So if probably for an Irish boxer coming well, Carl through. Carl was already well established before mm -hmm. Barry anyway, do you know what I mean? It's, I mean, Barry got his name out there a bit, yeah, with the TV and, and with his name, but I think was it. With McGuigan's or not, but McGuigan's car was always there to be a world champion. Even when he was an amateur, like you know, he was a great amateur. Even and even though he had the perfect pro style, like it was, I knew, I knew he was going to do big things, and I'm sure so did the rest of all the other Irish fighters too. Like I think, he, I think he sort of said as well. He feels sometimes as if he'd nearly overachieved because you know probably everybody dreams to become a world champion. You know, you know, but, but become a two weight, two weight, three Lethal. three time world champion. It's it's Lethal. unbelievable, you know, to say like. It's sort of one of them stories in the years that come people will go, you know, the Carl's probably, uh, kids still coming up now, who'd want to be when you grow up, I want to be Carl Frampton, you know, for for years to come it's still going to be that, and it'd have been fitting probably in a way that if it had been a three year world champion, you know, it's creating history. Yeah. You know? Oh, it's sad and whatever else, but you dare to be great, and it just never happened, and that's, that's just, I would, you wouldn't want him to dwell on it too much, you know, see if I can look back and think, jeez, even one, one, one world title, you know, that's me complete. Headline yeah, cards in America and everything. Yeah, yeah, and you know, there's a certain percentage of people who can say that, or there's a certain percentage of people that make money out of boxing, and he's done it all, so like, class, that's all you can say, it's amazing. Enjoy does, retirement. Does it, sort of, does it sort of still keep the fire burning yourself, sort of going, I just want one opportunity? You know, one opportunity to grab it. You know what? It's thirty three now. I'm turning thirty three in February. Thir I have another few months left. So <laughs> a few months left. Well, uh, I'm getting there. Um, I just want a, an opportunity, as I say. Like, I mean, which which stock started spreading all this shit about a date that I never even had a clue about. There was no date in my mind. I was looking to after he had co he got the COVID and the day before the fight. You know, it was it was a kick in the bollocks to be honest. So I wanted to move on. I want a challenge. I want one challenge here. Now you know, it doesn't matter who it is. Just get me someone who is meant to go in and destroy me, and let's go and see what I can do. 
Do you know what I mean? And, and sort of, like as I say, you want an active and obviously box right now because of obviously a time out. Um, I do know that obviously in, in the background they were obviously trying to get you a w, I think it was a WBA gold belt um, against a Russian and it was going to be a final in for world title as well. So was it sort of like in the background when you sort of no talks like that's going you sort of going because of the luck I'm sort of having it's not going to happen. It obviously hasn't ended up happening because of boxing. You know, people slip in the rankings and you know they throw somebody else in there instead but yeah. like that's the sort of opportunity you just want now. It's just like, That's it. I, I, I thought, I, I, you know, it was talks and all about it and whatever else. And obviously, you, you, then, you know, you're talking to your team and they're saying, you know, there's an opportunity of this happening and they're in the middle of trying to sort it out for you. I automatically just thought, right, that's it. Why wouldn't he take me? Like, you know, mm -hmm. who am I? You know, I haven't really established myself, you know, but knowing fine well that if he does take me, oh, I was going to know ready and write it. You know, I I genuinely believe I'd have beat that kid, hundred percent. He's a WBA gold champion. That could have been a final eliminator, as as well as Archie Sharp can be a final eliminator. Why not? Mm -hmm. it makes no sense. What do you want? Just a shot at a world title? You've got to earn it in some way, and I'm willing to earn it too. So like, let's go. You know. Exactly, and I say it's just looking out for one opportunity. Like I, I know, it, I know, um, another fight was sort of offered, but off sort of offered, sort of really short notice in um, Sami Ersiani. Um, two days, two days. You were sort of given to sort of try and get a fight made, and it's sort of one you tried to get made, but just wasn't happening. Yeah, well, I was offered. You know, why not? Why would I not want to fight for an EBU belt? Of course I do. Um, me personally was offered, but. Sometimes you just don't have the say. And that's just it, like, you know, some it's a business and I'm not a businessman. If I'm being perfectly honest. I'm not a businessman. I mean, I don't know much about money, I just know how much I want. <laughs> and that's as simple as that. Um Samir hasn't got any T V. Gary Hyde hasn't got any T V or so he was would have been looking to put it on a Frank Warren show. And he would have been looking huge money for it too. Um it would have been a different stage, different scenario if he would have had the uh, backing of a TV and they were going to pay me. And like, and like, Sianni had a, a humdinger of a fight as well with Alex Diamangi. You know, oh. I think it was up for fight of the year and stuff as well. And, Quite good. Um, you know, but Diamangi obviously stopped in the last round, I think last it was. Round. But he should have been probably Pure stopped before, beforehand, I think. Was it the round before he could hardly even walk? Yeah, he was exhausted and he got the benefit of the doubt by the referee, but I didn't think, you know, maybe you could say it, maybe it could have been stopped, but give him the chance because he was winning. Mm -hmm. I, I had him winning in the fight. You know, I mean, Zayani's just there. I mean, if Dilman Gani would have used his head that wee small bit more, you know, he sat in the pocket with him. What was he doing? Sat in the pocket, get off, get your shots off, and get out and back ahead of him. He was a taller fighter. He could have done that, you know. And he would have went around a lot easier, but he didn't. You know, and that's where it comes down to experience, and I'm sure he learned from that. And you know that will definitely be a big factor in his career from now on. That he not do two, two obviously two sparring partners obviously front and as well obviously you and Alex have both that's obviously right. sparred him in the lead up to the fight. That's right. Um, do, have you any sort of plans? You know, and when you are going to return, has there been sort of any sort uh, of discussions? Like I know there's a tenth of July card's been announced. I think they're looking at Joe Joyce twenty fourth. Well, I'm not on that. Twenty fourth of July, um, and then obviously I think that you know it's been announced this week, but the Fila is going to be on the sixth of sixth of August. You're supposed to be on the Fila two years ago. That's right. Um, against Sam Bowen. Yeah. Um, it was a it was a fight everybody knew was happening, but was never announced. Yeah. You know. Oh, no, I I thought that, like I I'd actually picked up the tickets and all for the Fila. I couldn't believe my luck. You know. The British champion's gonna come here and give me a shot, and you know I'm a, literally a stone throw. I guess not far at all. Like you know I'm a Mandy Town. That's in the Falls Park. It's it's crazy. It's a great invasion, you know. But um, yeah, Sam didn't want to come to Belfast. Then you know uh, I think it was all just talk and playing games. So we ended up going to Birmingham. Sure, you still won the title now. Still got the title, so it doesn't really no. matter. But but obviously you know when you when you when you look at your sort of career and stuff as well. If obviously the field was offered to you this year, you, you wouldn't even have, have to think about it. I wouldn't even have to think about it. Just tell me who, tell me, you know, how much I'm getting and let's go.
like I think they're talking between five and you know I think the last time they're just over ten thousand. I'm not sure if they'll get to ten thousand with the COVID and things like that as well. But you know, I'm sure there'll be people claiming the claiming the realm and sitting on top of ever, you know, later. Even the three tops and everything will be like you know it'll be like sure. uh, the good olden days. But but yeah. like you know after so long at the ring, they they get an opportunity to fight in the field. You know it's like you you go and fight on it today. Yeah. You know if it was in a you know to give you a fight on it today, you go and fight today. It's like for a lot of fight fans, you sort of see that and sort of go, "Here I am." You know, you might not have seen me on TV for a while, but I'm British champion and I'm and I'm going places. That's it. You know, it's uh, the time out of the rings. Obviously, boxing only are make you or break you. You know, mentally. You know, I mean, already a mental game. But when things aren't going well in your career, you suffer, and no one sees it. You know, it's like it's about if you have family and you've and you've kids. I'm sick of saying it because everyone's all, you know, people, but people talk about, you know, they're always just talking the goods, the, the good thing about boxing and this and, and they're wanting for it. But let's be honest with ourselves, like, it's a fuck, it's a head fuck, the whole thing, you know. <laughs> you think you're going places one minute and the next minute you're back to numb, skint, hoping, texting. Hoping for something to happen here, you know, something to happen there, you know, you get no response from people. It's a bit of a joke at times, but it is what it is. I mean, this is my last go at it, you know. If I don't be getting a fight pretty soon, I really need to, to make the right decision for my own head, my own mm-hmm. life, and everything else, you know, because it's starting to get, it's starting to get. And, uh, and do you know what? That that's that's probably sometimes what you want to be saying because like it's it's impossible you, you wouldn't be human yeah. if you can't have that much an activity fights falling through like at the very last minute you know i think i'm very vocal on the fact sometimes i think promoters are there to promote they're there to get the best out of you you've been saying me frank warren since february march of last year they try to make three fights you've been has, no, you know there's, there's been no news since march there's people getting fights, getting back out in fights, and they're still in the news of, of you. And, and, and I know Frank does like a, a weekly sort of thing with, with other broadcasting and stuff like that, but nobody seemed to mention your name. Well, see, I'm not a big ticket sale, I'm not a big draw. Like, I was, I'm not better in a boost, it's obvious. You know, I'm not, maybe I haven't got that personality to sell myself as much, you know, but I can fight, and I like to fight. I don't fight any of these top guys at top talk all this you know it's sell tickets to what comes out of their mouth so that's it like do you know what i mean but i'm feeling a wee bit i'm feeling i'm down now i'm training an evolution i'm feeling like it's a bit of a new i'm training up now of the day and then evolution and now we aim who knowing me he's helped me out tremendously mm-hmm. i feel a wee bit rejuvenated like i feel a wee bit i feel good and ready to go again i'm training every single day so i mean i just hope thing i maybe get a date here soon and, it's like a rebirth then, the, Apache, way, the a, rebirth of the Apache. In a way, like, you know, it's just a, you get stuck in your own way. I, I do my second session on my own up in Emerald now, I just, I just thought, you know, I'm going to have to make a change because I'm just not enjoying it as much, you know, get up on my own and opening up and, you know, it's easy to go up there and bluff a session on your own, whereas when you come down here and take it two, three, real training, real hard training, I mean, and you know you're ready. And that's that's the way I'm feeling. I'm feeling good. I'm getting I'm getting a hard session every night, and I'm right a rock. You feel like a caretaker tends to open and close your sort of self, but you, you know, do, you do. For, for anybody who sort of hasn't been near the evolution yet, obviously, what I think it's only open a few months. Yeah. Um, and obviously looking around the gym, you know, it's as probably as fresh as you know the gym can be. Like, yeah. I think evolution last place was John Brains. Yeah. Well, no, no, correct. No, he he was... John John's before. No, it was in um. I'm lost. Huh? So obviously a change in the environment, obviously somewhere new for you to sort of... It's good, like, and again, you're going down and you're watching some of the amateur kids and whatever else, and, you know, and even, even just doing their warm-ups and watching them all, and watching them do their thing, you know, you go, Jesus Christ, I forgot about that, I forgot about this, and you're trying to be different small things, you can add to your game, so it's all good. Is there, is there any sort of young amateurs in the gym here you've sort of noticed to sort of keep an eye on for the future? There's loads of them. There's loads of them, especially all the young ones are all brilliant. You know, there's a couple of girls. There's Sarah Carmen, isn't it? It's Carmen. And then your wee kid, I forget, what's his name? 
Oscar, me Oscar. There's loads of them, loads of them. There's a brilliant team. And um, I'm looking forward to see what they all can do as well. I guess it's sort of some pain when, when the kids are seeing you and obviously seeing you as a pro boxer and what they want to be, it sort of can reinvigorate you go, oh, actually, they actually think something of me here and I can... You know, it's yeah, like, it's, you know, it's it's like when you get your hair cut and you go out and you go, ah, I feel amazing. Oh, I you know, know, the kids are going, the give day, me your autograph and things like that. And you're it's going, amazing, it really is. It's, yeah, every time I come into the place, I get a great feeling. It's like, you can you can see the admiration. It's, it's and You can see they want to they wanna do something in boxing and be great in boxing. But, yeah, it's, uh, they've got a great wee team down here. And it's and Jack Quinn, I told you I was talking to you about yeah. him earlier off camera. Big future, which... Just about how how they go from here, but without doubt, all the all the skill and talent in the world. And I guess the wee things you sort of watching you in the gym and stuff like that, and years to come, you'll be sort of going. I remember sparring me, you know, or, 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 or watching me, Jack, loads around him, you know, so talented, you know. So I fully expect him, and he's got a great attitude, so I expect him to do big things. Definitely, being the perfect role model sometimes Absolutely. for him as well. Um, obviously, one final thing, sort of before we go, we've got you to sign a pair of gloves. 100%. Um, if you just want to sh show the mirrors, obviously, so people can see that it's your autograph. You know, Ooh, nah. you know what the world's like nowadays when people's gone, you know, and they need to sort of prove. So, we're going to do a wee competition, um, obviously, afterwards. So, for anybody who's obviously sharing um, and commenting on the sharing, obviously, the, this, this interview, um, and obviously hashtagging the Apache uh, in your post. Um, and obviously we'll get a, a winner picked in, in probably due course but, but look Ando obviously you know, as we always say you know, I think this is what three or four interviews have done now no you know, fight that's a, a, general, a, no, actually, a getting, no fight I'm a wee bit embarrassed there again. I was talk, talking to you before it's like oh, what, what am I meant to say what am I to talk about you know it's like it's just one of them things and as I say I'm final crack and I'll see what happens definitely so obviously if Frank's listening or if everybody obviously wants to tag Frank's interview they obviously remind him that and those still as boxer and to get him a fight, please do so. But hopefully the next time we're obviously talking, you probably either be victorious in a fight or you have a fight coming up. Hopefully. All right, cheers, Ando. Take care. Much, Steve. Thanks. Thanks.